Thank you so much. Hi, I am Sibren. I'm a developer at the Blender Institute. And uh, today we're going to do a workshop about uh, drone render form with Flamenco. Um, so this is uh, about Flamenco. <laughs> it is uh, not about a bird, but it's about the dance. So uh, I'm not going to dance for you guys. <laughs> no, sorry about that. Yes. So that, that's where it comes from, from the, all the dance of all the little computers that are doing stuff for you. Um, so a little bit of an overview. Um, first, I will talk a little bit about the structure of flamenco, like how do the components fit together, what is it all made of, uh, where to get flamenco, maybe you already know, uh, how to set up your render farm, and how to set up the Blender Cloud part, because it's roughly separated in two parts. One part you run for yourself with your own hardware, on your own infrastructure, and then another part that can be run by the, the Blender Institute on uh, the Blender Cloud infrastructure or you can host that yourself if you really want. I won't go into hosting the server part yourself because that's a huge topic and we wouldn't be able to cover all of it in, in just one hour. Uh, after that, we'll go look at uh, scheduling of the workers, um, how failures are handled, because I think that's quite an important thing when it comes to dealing with rendering, stuff always falls over. And a little bit about logging, because I noticed that people don't often quite know where to look for which log of file in which situation. So before we begin, um, two things that I always ask for in my workshops. One, interrupt me. At any time, if, if you have a remark, if you want to say, uh, if you want to ask something, if it's unclear, or if you have a different opinion than mine, uh, just raise your hand, shout it out if I don't see your hand. Uh, I want this to be, to be interactive and not just a, a, a one hour of me droning on about flamenco and ask stupid questions. That's number two. So who of you has seen Andy's talk this morning? All right, let me flip it. Who hasn't seen Andy's talk this morning? Okay. Andy covered a bit about how we work at the, the Blender Animation Studio, the structure of the files and everything. Um, so I will, I will also discuss a little bit of that then. Um, I started working on Flamenco fairly soon after I started working at the Blender Institute, uh, which was back in 2016. And the first open movie that was rendered with it was uh, Agent 327. After that, also the Daily Dweebs. Uh, Spring was uh, also using Flamenco. And now the work on, on Rain, all the, the test renders and everything. Uh, it's a new character for a uh, character uh, development workshop on Blender Cloud. So the goal of Flamenco really is to support um, the rendering of animation. Because that, that's what we do at the animation studio. So that's also what it's aimed at. So one of the things that it cannot do is tiled rendering of single images. Who's interested in tiled rendering of single images? One, <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> I think the infrastructure is perfectly fine for it. The only thing that is, should be figured out then is how do you uh, get Blender from the command line so far that it just renders one tile? How do you collect the tiles and turn it into the final output image? So if any of you want to help me out on this, and write some patches for, for the pipeline so that it's supported. I'm all up for it, it's just that we did, just didn't need it ourselves that much yet. Also, it's meant to be used in a studio setting. And this can be a small studio with just one person at home, or that could be a medium-sized studio as we have at the uh, at Blender. Um, but it's not necessarily meant to be the easiest thing to install. It does require a bit of knowledge about how things are meant to be set up. Uh, it does require a bit of knowledge about how to move files around and what a directory means. And so some people try to use Blender even and, and think they can just install Flamenco and render it on the cloud with a click or three. Uh, unfortunately, it's not that far. I wish it was that simple, but it's not. So let's look a bit at the structure of, of Flamenco. Um, Yes. 
So I have a, a bunch of cubes here that represent computers. Um, the green arrows represent the, the, the command and control messaging, and then the blue arrows represent the files that are being transferred back and forth. So what we see as the render farm uh, consists of the workers that are actually running Blender and doing all the rendering. They do, they do the work. They're being uh, controlled by a manager. So if you start your own render farm based on Flamenco, that's the stuff that you would install on your, on your network. And then the workers access some shared storage that will contain all the assets, the blend, blend files, everything. Then you have the server, which is uh, part of Blender Cloud. You can run it yourself, as I said, but it's easier to just use the, the cloud one. And the artist, could be yourself, the, the user of the system, uh, has their own computer, of course, running uh, Blender. So basically, they open a blend file, they go to the Flamenco panel, they click on Render to Flamenco. All the files are written directly to the shared storage, and then the workers can reach them. And that is a situation that we've been using for a long time at the Blender Institute. Our, our situation is really simple. We have uh, slash render, which is an NFS mounted directory that is on some server with a lot, with a lot of hard disk, a lot of space. Um, and the artist can write to it directly because they have slash render mounted on the same spot as all the workers do. So without any smartness, paths just work because it's all the same anyway. Well, this is nice, but it's also very dumb. Um, we work with um, Subversion for managing the assets. <coughs> so every time an artist wants to work on something, say they want to work on Spring, want to do some animation of a shot, they make a checkout of the Subversion repository. Oh, who does not know what Subversion is? All right. Basically, it's a simple way of, of um, communicating changes to each other. So it was made for source code for developers. One developer, every developer has their own copy of all the files. They can make a change to a file. They send that change to a central server. And then other developers can get that change. And that way you can get the latest version of everything. And it's all relatively, uh, relatively small because only the changes are saved. And not a copy of the entire file all the time. And it, also, it not only works for, for source code, which is text, but it also works for binary files like uh, blend files. Uh, so the artist says, okay, give me Spring. He gets all the files for Spring on his local hard disk, makes a change, and then wants to test that change in, in Flamenco. But that change may not be the final thing. He not, may not want to send it to, to his coworkers yet, just wants to try something. So then all the files that are necessary for that render job are copied to the shared storage. And so with the very dumb system, it's very, very dumb, because every render job has its own copy of the files. Um, this was doable because we had a lot of space, but um, it also had a problem when we wanted to try and move stuff to the cloud. So if you want to run this on AWS or Azure or whatnot, you have a problem because you're transferring gigabytes and gigabytes of files all the time. Um, so what we now do is the manager has a deduplicating file server, which means that Blender sends all the files to the manager, but only those files that the manager doesn't have in storage already. So only the changes are sent. The manager writes it to the shared storage and from then on, the, the dance is still the same with the workers accessing this, uh, the shared storage. And um, these, what is the same file? Well, the file is the same if it has the same content and the, the same file length and everything, then we call it the same file. So it could be renamed, it could be anywhere on, on your file system. It will just make a checksum of it using a SHA sum, and it's just the three letters of the creators of the, the algorithm. Uh, I don't know the names. But because this is Shah Sum is the base for the thing, we call the thing a shaman. 
So where to get Flamenco, you can go to two websites. One is flamenco.io, where you find Flamenco itself, the manager, the worker, we'll take a look at that later. And you can go to cloud.org slash services to download the Vedemic Cloud add-on, which will give you uh, access to Flamenco, the ability to send your files to, uh, to the firm from within Blender. Any questions about this so far? Yes, one, one in the back. How, e how easy it is to send a custom render job, you say, or custom commands? Uh, it's tricky. So we'll, we'll come to that later when we look at the actual ingredients of what makes a render job, and we'll see a bit more about the ingredients of uh, the choices that are made, and maybe you completely don't agree with it. Yes? I'll, I'll repeat the question for the recordings and yeah. people at home. So the question is, what basically, what is handled with subversion? What is actually on slash render? And is there anything else in between? Uh, is slash render version managed? Um, slash render, for us, is just a big file system. So that's not version managed. Um, it's the shared stuff. Slash render is the, the shared storage that we use. Um, Subversion so has all the, the, that's the ground truth that has all the assets and everything. The checkout is done in a different directory. That's locally on the computer of the artist so that the file access is the, the fastest because they have it on a fast SSD. When you say, okay, render this file, some software starts analyzing that file, looks at uh, all the dependencies that it has. So then it finds that, share, that LinkedIn character asset blend file. Uh, and it recurses in through that. So then if you have a prop in that file that comes from yet another blend file, it will also copy that one. It will also copy all the textures that are used and everything. That's all copied into one bundle and stored on slash render in our case. Can the storage be bypassed if all the computers already have access to everything anyway? Uh, well, as of uh, before yesterday, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Adi told me, like, ah, it's not working for us. He's making all these stupid copies. I don't want that. They can reach it anyway. So uh, as of yesterday, yeah, you can. <laughs> All right, let's go look at what actually makes up a Flamenco render uh, job. So it's basically jobs, tasks, and commands. Um, a job is the highest level thing. That's the thing that you give to the server. You say, okay, uh, render this blend file from frame X to frame Y. Just do it. It's a small JSON document that is just shoveled there. Uh, so that's a high level. You, this is the thing that gives you high-level control. It does the status, it's queued, it's active, it's failed, uh, it's complete. Uh, it has a priority. So you can just say this is priority uh, somewhere between 0 and 100. In our case, high priority means a high number. Because otherwise, I always get confused when it's like priority 1 is high, but priority 100 sounds higher. So it's just high is high. Uh, and then a job, once it arrives on the server, it gets converted into a list of tasks. These tasks are like render these frames. Again, like a job, but probably a smaller range. So you can do one frame, five frames, 10 frames per task. And these are the things that are being sent to a worker. So a worker doesn't know anything about jobs. It just receives the task it has to do, and then it does it. Um, if the task also has a status, so it can also be active and queued and uh, it can be requeued if you want. So if you have a failed task because some 
some file was missing, you fix it quickly in the meantime, and then it can be requeued without having to requeue the entire job. You can just click on one button, requeue this task, and it will just do that. If there's too many failed tasks, then the entire job will fail. It will cancel all the other tasks in the job so that the farm can render on something that is not failing, hopefully, the next job. With, so a job has a priority. So all the <coughs> tasks are first sorted by their job priority. And then within that job, they also have their own priority. Um, again, simple sorting order. Basically, the first task gets run first. But there's also dependencies. So if you have chunks of frames to be rendered, and then they should be converted into a small video, and then the next chunk of frames to be rendered also converted to a small video, those conversion to video has a really high priority, but they do depend on their input frames. So as soon as the input frames are there, something can start working on the video, but not before. But the next frames don't <coughs> depend on that video, so rendering the next frames can also already happen in case there's nothing that can do the video rendering. So it's a, it's a double system. Um, so then, in the same way that jobs have a list of tasks, a task has a list of commands. And here we get a little bit to how easy is it to customize it and to, to send another command. These are not literal command line commands that should be executed. These are more abstract things. They say um, render frame A to B, again, with Blender, this Blend file. Uh, they say merge the sequence of PNG files that you find there with FFmpeg um, and merge that into a video or combine these two EXR files with different samples of the same frame, merge those and create a new EXR file. And um, the here, if something fails, that just fails the task. The command doesn't have a status. It's just a part of that task. And the, if a command fails, the task fails. So here, you uh, the, the final command that is to be executed, of course, that needs to be constructed at some time. But that's done by the worker. At, at the last moment, it constructs the, the command line and executes it. And for development, this was really, really easy because um, I could keep the job definition as is. I could keep all the tasks as they are. If there was a mistake in the command line, I could just fix it in the worker, just deploy it to the workers, and it's, it's done. It doesn't need recompiling. Nothing needs to change in, in any of the systems. It would just rerun uh, run the new command. But it also makes it slightly trickier to get a new command in there because you need support on the server because it needs to construct all the tasks that contain all the commands. So you need su support for it on the server and you need support for it on the, on the worker. Any Unclarity, is this clear? Yeah. Uh, so is it, if I have a new idea of um, doing the abstract command, is it possible to send a command in the last line of task? Because it sounded like for the PNG build in the line of task, so then by the time I build it, I'm actually now the actual command is, I guess I'm kind of like extending the concept of adding the new command. Um, and one thing I'm specifically curious about is it sounds like you're really just uh, running the cleanup process. You're referring to techniques I yes, almost hear the, the name of, but can you uh, say it again? JS. Right, yeah. I've task yes, I've tried it. Not, uh, it's Node.js. <laughs> but in the end, the worker is like a task runner. Yes, it, it asks the manager, give me a task, please. It executes that task. It reports on all the longing and everything. Um, also, one detail that I skipped in, in these images. The, the arrows are the data flow. So of course, all the systems collaborate with each other. But the actual TCP connection is only made from the workers to the manager and from the manager to the server and not the other way around. So that means that um, your manager could be somewhere in a, in a demilitarized zone between your internal and your external firewall so that maybe an external client can connect to it. Um, and then your workers could be 
unreachable for the manager itself, safely on your local network, and still they can communicate with each other. And the same, the server doesn't need to connect to the manager at all. So that could be, again, completely inside your own firewall on your local network. Right now, I can't reach our own, my own manager at Blender because I just firewall in between. So from a, also from a privacy point of view, I've heard a lot of people say, well, I want to use Flamenco, but I don't want to use Blender Cloud as a server because I don't want to send my files there. Well, I wish we had the bandwidth and the CPU power to handle all your files, but we don't. So no files are sent there, it's just uh, the commands themselves. So the file names, yeah, if you're really sensitive about fi sending file names somewhere, then you shouldn't use it. Tiny bits of logging, end up there if you if you don't want to share that with just the people in your project then also don't use it otherwise it's fine so looking at setting up the farm then oh yeah can you prioritize the jobs in the queue yes you can just click on the priority type in a new one and it will be sent to the manager, and it's all fine. So the second part is, how do they set it up? Because we have how they have logged the project, but we have not set it up yet. So the question is, how do they set it up? Do they require it from the project that is not yet connected? Right, so the question is, how connected is are these commands to using a particular render engine? Yeah, how do they have the time? Uh, yes and no. Uh, we'll look at uh, the the current existing ones, uh, and we have one that u really uses the, the sample chunking that Cycles provides, well, then you have to use Cycles. We also have just render these frames and then it doesn't matter which uh, engine you use. So when you're thinking of setting up the farm, that's, this is always what I think about, oh, render farm, big machines, lots of them. Uh, but if you want, you can also do it like this. <laughs> you see all the components here, you have render nodes, you have network connections, you have the stick shared storage, and it doesn't need to be more complex than this, actually. Flamenco Manager, Flamenco Worker, you can download from flamenco.io. Um, it's all developed on developer.blender.org because it's a Blender created project. Um, so there you will also find the sources for uh, Flamenco Server but not in an easily downloadable and runnable package like you have here. So the manager uses MongoDB as a database. I did bundle MongoDB into the downloadable package. So it should just start it for you and stop it for you if, uh, if you want it. I would recommend just install it yourself and manage it yourself because it's uh, a bit more stable. It uses MongoDB because Blender Cloud uses MongoDB. So when I added Flamenco Server to MongoDB, so to the cloud, it also used MongoDB. And it's a basically a synchronization process. So it just made sense to use the same database here as well. So the manager links to the server. And this linking process entails uh, exchanging an ID and a random password. You can do that through the uh, web interface. I will show that in a, in a minute. And then you can also configure it through that web interface. If you really want to tweak some advanced parameters, you have to go into uh, a config file. But we even have a config file editor in the web interface. Then there's the workers. The workers, they can just detect Flamenco Manager on your network um, if it all works. There are some company policies are that are blocking multicasts, yada, yada, blah, 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 and then it doesn't work. Uh, sometimes you have Spotify running on your machine and then Flamenco manager will say no because Spotify takes up that same space of auto detection as uh, Flamenco uses. Um, and they're configured via files and those files they are read in from a few locations. Um, as we have slash render for all the, the render assets we also have slash shared for other shared stuff. So we have shared software, Flamenco Worker, and there we have the configuration file for our in-house farm. So that's read first. And then from the home directory of the user running the worker, uh, it also run, 
get some other uh, configuration. It merges the two. So you can put worker specific stuff into one file and still have most of your configuration uh, spread throughout your, well, used from the same location. Can you maybe open the door? It's getting hot. <laughs> yes. Um, so what we're, we're talking about setting up the thing. So uh, yeah, if you open it all the way, it will just magnetize. <laughs> um, so when you're setting up Flamenco, what are the important bits? Well, one is where is the shared storage? So of course, quite important because everything revolves around those files. Where's Blender? And FFmpeg and maybe some other tools that you're using? And how do people send files there? And I want to look at the last thing first, which is the Shaman. Uh, I've already mentioned this guy. It's now built into Flamenco Manager. Um, and that means that as a location, instead of say, giving a directory, you say, OK, give me Shaman colon slash slash and then the name of your, your manager. Uh, that implies HTTPS because we're living in a modern world. Everything is encrypted anyway. If you don't want to set that up, that's also fine. But then you have to say shaman plus HTTP, and then we'll just use the HTTP protocol. So how does it work? Well, Blender starts analyzing all your files, finds those linked assets, runs over them, computes their checksum, and then sends a list of the checksum, the file size, and the path to uh, Flamenco. So it sends out a whole list of files. Then the shaman checks, oh, I have those, I have that, I have that. Sends you back the files that it still needs. It also keeps track of who is already uploading that file. Because maybe somebody regenerated some cache somewhere that needs to be sent to the farm. Maybe your colleague is already sending it, and then you hopefully don't have to. So it sorts the stuff that is already being uploaded at the moment at the last. And if you send something, yes? Yes. Um, if somebody else is uploading that and you're about to upload, could you theoretically share the uploading load between two people? So you're, you're basically telling that other person, hey, I'm uploading the second half of that file. Yes. Uh, so in short, did we implement BitTorrent for uploading? <laughs> I think that would be amazing, um, but no. Uh, but there is a thing that it will just kick, just close your connection as soon as the other guy up is finished. So you both. In the worst case, you'll both be uploading the same file at the same time. If it turns out that your start doesn't end after his finish, so if he's still uploading, you're still uploading, then, but when the first one stops, the other one is also cut short. Um, just as an idea, you could possibly do that uh, with already existing technology to not uh, do a push transfer, but a pull transfer, uh, and do um, basically continue downloading like the HTTP. Oh, that's an interesting one. Do a pull transfer, but then uh, that chunked transferring. Hmm. Yeah, maybe make that work. Would have to rethink the server client because then the you make the connection, but you are the server. Interesting. What I'm hearing is next time he's coming tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Then the server makes the connections no matter. Yeah, exactly. Well, it can work, but I have to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so then after everything has been uploaded, um, Blender requests a checkout. So by that time, it also registered the job to Flamenco uh, server. It has the job ID. It then says, OK, Flamenco manager, please give me a checkout of these files with these checksums as these paths. Um, and named at checkout with this ID. And then the manager starts symlinking. It starts creating your entire directory structure. It starts symlinking all the files in place. And without taking up any extra space, you have your whole direct your, your job storage structure complete. So I made this for sending over slow network connections. But in the end, my colleagues were very happy with it because the uploading, even to the local storage, was way faster. No more duplicate files. Uh, the, the big monsters in Spring are 1.4 gigabytes each. 
um, because lim of limitations of Blender, we had to have like five of them instead of only one and then duplicating it. So every render job was really heavy and this really helped a lot. But it only works on a platform that supports sim linking. And on Windows, I think it is supported sort of if you're a super user, which I wouldn't run Flamenco Worker as a super user because it can delete files and I don't know if it's bug free. <laughs> I know whether it's bug free. <laughs> so this is what that file store would look like. Um, so you have uh, here just shared Flamenco file store. That's what I told Flamenco, okay, store all the files there. And then it has a stored directory and an uploading directory. Nobody is uploading, so the uploading directory is empty right now, but it would have the same structure otherwise. And you have the checksum. We take two characters off the front and then so that it's a bit nested directory structure. And then the blobs, which are all the files, and the file name is just the file length. So in the case that two files have the same checksum, they're probably not the same length, and this should not result in any collisions. And then this is what it would look like um, in that checkout. So every file that you see here is actually a sim link to uh, something something dot blob in the file storage. You also see an outside project directory, and I will take a look at that. There we go. I put one panorama photo in the background of the image of the scene. Yes. How do you handle the user uploading and overriding files while the render is being done? Well, the thing is, the render that is running at the moment uses files that are there already. So if the user changes a file, it contents change. If the contents change, the checksum changes. If the checksum changes, it means it's in a... Uh, it will be in a different directory here, which means that <coughs> even though the file name here will be the same, it will link to a different file in the file storage because it has a different content, it has been changed, it's in a different location in the file store, and thus it will use simply the, the new file here. So the question is, what would happen to linked files if you change the link? Same. I don't uh, quite under hear the last bit of your question, sorry. Yes. Ah, yes. Question is, if the file that is changed ends up in a different directory because of the checksum, doesn't that break your links? And fortunately not, because of the sim linking, because these are the files that Blender will see. And the sim linking on, on Linux is transparent for the program reading it. So Blender thinks it's reading this structure. And this is the structure that you gave as an artist when sending the, the files there. So it will still see everything that it expects to see. Yeah, I just wanted to ask how many versions of the same file are kept because it can grow very large, very fast, I think. Yes. <laughs> um, 
everything is kept. Uh, at the studio, we have um, uh, we we keep all the rendered jobs, and if we don't, um, for reasons, it can happen. But then it's a it's a human going in there and deleting that the directory for that render job. I mean the blobs. So yes, I'm getting to that. <laughs> that means that the simlinks will be gone. And then there is a background process inside Flamenco Manager that once every hour or so you can configure this, looks through the thing, and starts cleaning up those blobs. So if blobs haven't been used um, in any of the currently linked structures, and they haven't, they're older than X days, they will be removed. Okay, thank you. May I ask another not so related question? <laughs> if after that you give it yeah. to that one. Okay. So uh, are there any plans on supporting Docker or uh, uh, getting like a Docker setup? Any plans on supporting Docker? Well, <coughs> there is nothing really to support in that sense. It's rather simple. Uh, I don't have plans on providing Docker images. We do have, um, because it's all open source, for the server, we do have our own Docker setup because Blender Cloud also runs on Docker. So if you want to set up your own server, you want to use Docker for it, um, go to the Blender Cloud repository and see how we set up there. That will be a good start of, uh, of that part anyway. Uh, my question is, uh, you mentioned, uh, if I'm correct, subversion, and you said words like checkout, and this is pretty much the words from the version control system. Uh, the question is, uh, do you use your own version control system, or you kind of utilize SVN or Git or something? I mean, the, the blob structure, etc. cetera. Uh, that is just custom made. It's not using anything else. Um, because I... It is so simple that uh, I didn't really feel that we should build up on some other technology that has way more features that can get more complex. Uh, so no, it's just a, a, as simple as I've just explained. That's all there is to it. So one thing that Flamenco also supports is um, a concept called variables. Um, because maybe your uh, workstations for the artists run on Windows, but maybe your render farm is on Linux, or the opposite, or you have uh, a Linux and a Windows and a Mac OS machine sitting idle at home, and you want to use them inside Flamenco. So we have these variables um, in order to deal with differences between platforms, so Mac OS and, and Windows, Linux, those kind of things, and environments. So, and then I see the users, so the artists, the people running Blender as an environment, and where is the render farm as an environment. Um, for example, at the Blender Studio, the workers and the, the, the artists are in the same environment. It's all mounted, same place, directories are all the same. Uh, so, and everybody is running Linux anyway, so we don't really have a use for this. But when you have maybe a render farm in the cloud somewhere, probably the directory structure there and the, the network infrastructure will be completely different than what you have uh, in your office. So we have two flavors. We have one-way and two-way variables. One-way are simple notation like that, curly braces, blender, and that can have a value for Linux, it can have a value for Windows, it can have a value for Mac OS. And those are handed out by the, uh, dealt with by the manager. So the manager knows the operating system of the worker. So when a manager hands a task to the worker, it d first is all the variable replacement, gives it to the worker, worker just sees paths and is dumb and stupid, just does what it's being told. So this is what the configuration looks like in the manager. You have the variable Blender, you can toggle it between one way and two way, but this is just a one way thing. And then the values for the different platforms. This one is only used for the workers, so there's no need to set it up as uh, different for users and workers because users don't use it anyway. Um, 
and shaman is another one. This is actually used by the workers. Why? I have to make a new fix for the manager. The little explanation there at the top is wrong, so ignore that. This is used by the uh, workers to find their uh, their their files. Basically, this is where the shaman made all those sim links and where the the files end up. And then there is the two-way variables, and these are a bit confusing um, because they are the same as the the other ones with, with the twist. They're also translated by the Blender Cloud add-on when you push your job to the server. Um, and we, by default, we have two of them. We have the job storage, we have render, but this is really free form up for you to to determine what you need, what you don't need. So why is it called two-way? Well, it looks at the value when submitting, and if it sees that some string matches that value, it replaces it by the variable itself with the curly braces notation. And then it works in the same way as so in one way, when the manager gives it to the worker, it is replaced again by the value. So it's a bit weird, you take a, the value and then you end up with the value, but these are bound to the operating system. So you can just do things like this. You can have shared flamenco jobs on Linux and S flamenco jobs on Windows and volume shared flamenco jobs on Mac OS. And when I submit something uh, that I store there, it's replaced by that. And if a worker then runs on Linux, uh, sorry, on Windows, it will read that. And this is the way we deal with differences in, in, in platforms. So far, it's the only thing we really needed because the specific commands the worker can handle anyway. It knows, oh, I have to render from this to that. It knows which parameters to give. It knows the operating system that is doing it. Usually there's no difference anyway, but if there is a difference, then it can handle all that as well. Aren't these just a workaround for somebody not using a one-way variable in the first place? Mm, not necessarily, because um, un uh, rotate it that way. Then yes, thanks. Um, unfortunately, Blender doesn't have variables. So what I use in in the Blender Cloud add-on is actually the file name of the current Blend file, and that's all there is to it. So yeah, you can. Tell you can tell it that it should go to. I maybe it could be a little bit smarter, but it's it's tricky. I think I think that it would be a good idea to have this variable system be a bit more extensive and be a bit better understood by the Blender Cloud add-on itself. So because now it it requires quite a bit of setup, manual setup, and we're thinking about pushing more configuration from the manager to the Blender Cloud add-on so that the Blender Cloud add-on just gets the information instead of you having to type everything. So in, and in th that case, this would also be solved, yes. So those workers, I think we discussed all of this pretty much. Um, the only thing is that uh, the workers can also declare their capabilities. Maybe you have a simple machine that's just not doing anything but is way too small to handle any of the files that you have for rendering, but it can move files around. Maybe something is fine for rendering, for running FFmpeg. Uh, so you can have little conf words in that configuration file that say Blender render, F uh, video encoding, file management, EXR merging to handle uh, who runs what. So I, you'll tr I have to speed up a little bit because we only have 15 minutes left. So looking at Flamenco Server, the thing that you need to do before you can run the whole thing is you have to set up a project. And a project is something like Spring, Agent 327, Daily Dweebs, just that is the what we call a project. I've seen people call every individual ad asset a project as well because it's a lot of work just the, the film project that you're working on. You click on that little pencil there on Blender Cloud. Oh, sorry. On Blender Cloud itself, you can go to my, my projects 
create a new one. Has anyone done this before? Few people. All right. Cloud.blender.org slash p for projects. You can create your own project there. Give it a name, nice image. You click on the edit button there. You go to the Flamenco thing, set a project for Flamenco. And then you can choose which manager you want to, to add. And for me as an admin, that's like 741 managers. Um, there we go. This is the Flamenco Manager setup web interface. It starts here automatically, by the way. If you start Flamenco Manager for the first time, you get a lot of text. And at somewhere it says, point your browser at any of these URLs. If you have multiple networks or multiple IP addresses, it will just list them all. And you just go to one that looks good. You get here, you can link to cloud.blender.org or your own server. You just type the URL of your own. Then you can say, okay, well, which one are we going to do? Well, conference demo, or maybe you want to make a new one. You can just type a new one. Oi. You get back to the server. I just chose to restart it just to be sure. And I was linked. And this means that if you now create your project, you go to all those settings, that manager will show up. You can click on link and then that manager is linked to that project. And this way, if you have a few different projects that are in a few different uh, render farms, you can manage better which one is available to which project. For example, during spring, we mostly used our internal uh, farm, but we also had the uh, IT for innovations supercomputer farm at our disposal. So we could also send stuff there and we link both through the same project. So many windows. Ah. There we go. So what's left, final ingredient is the Blender Cloud add-on. It's built up on Blender ID for the identification. So you need to create a Blender ID account, enable the Blender ID authentication add-on, which is bundled with Blender. You log in, it tells you you're logged in. And then if you go to the Blender Cloud add-on, you see you're logged in and you have some things that don't have to do anything with Flamenco, but are pretty cool anyway. You can sync your settings back and forth. You have a texture browser, but we're going to go down here to the project settings. So up there, you can select the project. You can configure your local project path, and this is something that is different for different situations. In our case, this would be where you make that subversion checkout. So it's the root of your project directory. In Adi's case, this would be on the shared storage already. So job file path is where are the jobs sent to? That could be the same directory. It could also not be a directory, but a Shaman URL. That was what you would type there. The job output path is where the renders would go to. So it doesn't matter what is configured inside the blend file. This is what will be passed on the, uh, on the command line of Blender to send the, the rendered files. And it gets a bit of a suffix. So it does include the, the job, the, the name of the user, that kind of stuff. So finally, we have uh, we have an exclude filter. Let's say in our case, it's all on the same network. The Cosmos Laundromat Tornado was 
one point something terabyte. You don't want to include that. You don't want to have that in a subversion. You don't want to copy that onto every artist's machine and then copy it back into the farm and have a different copy for every render job. You just want to refer to it once. Um, so then you can say, okay, exclude uh, the VDB caches, exclude the, the Alembic caches, exclude whatever. Another approach would be to have this checkbox checked, relative paths only. If anything is linked in with an absolute path, it just assumes that it's working. It assumes you know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I know. <laughs> it assumes you know it, it's working and um, it won't copy those files. So if you have the Alembic files on the shared storage somewhere, you refer to it by absolute path, it won't be copied. Uh, The project path is something that is quite important because it relates to the remapping that we do. What you saw in the file browser that I had open uh, just earlier was that underscore outside project. And then you saw home, Sebrin, pictures, yada, 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 the, the picture. And that was because that file was outside of the project directory. But we want inside that job definition all the assets to be findable. I did not have relative paths only checked, so it was an absolute path, but still included in the job anyway. It was sent to the farm, but because we want to have all the paths local to that one job directory, so it's a, a self-contained unit, uh, the blend file is actually rewritten. So the blend file that references that asset is rewritten to re point to the new uh, file. And in order to prevent many rewrites, you just want to set the local project path properly so that everything is in there anyway. And then finally, the strip components. You can see below here, this is where it would save the, uh, save the, the, the job. Oh, sorry, it would render to. And structure to flamenco slash flamenco overview I had C home Cibrin on cloud blender bconf 2019 structure of flamenco to flamenco overview dot blend open at this time. So it uses those uh, the path relative to the local project path also in the render output so that the render output matches your project structure and structures are a bit familiar. If you want to get rid of the first bit like structure of flamenco, if you, that's always there, you can increase strip components so that it will just cut off stuff until it just ends up with the file name. Then finally, we have the actual render, Flamenco render panel, where again you can select the manager, you can select the job type, how many frames per task. So that would be, say, five frames per task. If you have something that's really long to load but quick to render, you want to increase that. If it's fast to load but slow to render, you want to decrease it. It's a bit of a, of a balance. Progressive rendering, that is doing the cycle-specific stuff. So not only does it chunk the frames, it also chunks the samples. It first tries to render everything with a very low number of samples, like one or two samples. Then it combines that into a video, and you have a very low resolution uh, video, well, low sample video. And then it starts incrementing in an exponential way the number of samples, because if you see it's all right, maybe you want to see it with 10 samples, but after that, you don't want to do another 10, you will maybe want to do another 100 or another 1,000. Yes? Okay. Oh, I actually got a microphone. Nice. Um, I've got a, a question for the frames per task option. Uh, basically, this depends on the person making the project on doing test renderings and finding out whether that is something that is lo long, slow to load and quick to render. Uh, but wouldn't that be actually something that the computer is uh, a lot better at judging it? Uh, yeah. So like, like maybe doing one or two test frames and then finding out how many frames per task that should yes, be? Yes, there, there are systems that can do that, but not Flamenco, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> And uh, the final thing I want to show is the video chunks, uh, which is we use for the edit. So then it just takes a bunch of frames and uh, puts it into small video files, then concatenates all the video files together. Quick race through scheduling. You can 
configure a schedule on the manager. You can say, OK, Monday through Friday from uh, 9 to 9, the computer is being used by an artist, and then at night it can run the jobs. A <laughs> little bit. <laughs> Another thing that we had a problem with, we had a worker who didn't mount the render file system properly. So it starts up, gets a job, it gets a task, doesn't find the blend file, fails the task, gets another task, doesn't find the blend file, fails the task, race through everything, everything cancelled. So now we have a pre-task check. You can configure it yourself. Um, so you can say, okay, write, make sure that that directory is writable, make sure that that directory is readable before you even ask a task. Just a small thingy. And then when a task fails, if a worker has too many failures on a certain job of a certain type, so Blender rendering on, on this particular shot, it gets blacklisted. It can still do um, ESR merging, moving files around, but it won't be allowed to render that shot anymore. Oh, I see. Yeah, I don't know if there are other workers available to retry the task, it, it get that failure is soft because somebody else can take over. If you have one machine with a little bit less memory, a bigger brother can still try it out. If there is no bigger brother, it's a complete failure. And then it fails. Also, if three, three or so workers have tried it and failed all, then it just failed. One thing to know about this is that offline workers also count. So if you see three workers that are still in the system but will never run again, you may want to get them out because they still count. Because if some worker is just now rebooting, will be up in another five seconds, it's a shame if your task got cancelled. And then there's a the server part that if it gets too many failed tasks for one job, it will just cancel the whole job, all the other tasks, and it's done. So what do you do then? You can requeue it, everything. if. Uh, all tasks were completed, it will just requeue all the tasks of that job. If some failed, some were cancelled, some were okay, all the completed ones will say at completed status and it will just requeue the, uh, the, the non-completed tasks. I think we don't have time to go through the logs, but if you have any questions, then this is the Blender chat channel where at least I hang out, and, but also other Flamenco users are there to, to help you out. And that was a race through flamenco. <laughs> so if 